Hi, this is Congressman Tom Cole of 4th District of Oklahoma, and this is another one of our weekly chats. Uh, I was thinking about this week, and I actually used this phrase on the, on the floor and in committee uh, this week. Uh, this was the week of the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's talk about the good first. I think you saw Congress at its very best uh, working on the National Defense Authorization Act. You know, there's no more important duty for the government of the United States than to protect the people of the United States. Uh, and for 61 years, the two parties, whatever their differences, have been able to come together and pass a National Defense Authorization Act that provides the blueprint for what we're going to do with our military in the forthcoming year. We did that again this year. And I think uh, uh, it was done in an exceptional bipartisan fashion. I want to single out particularly uh, the chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, Adam Smith, from the state of Washington, and my good friend, the ranking Republican member, uh, Mike Rogers from Alabama. Mike and I are classmates and close associates and work together well. And now we're even going to be in the same football conference in a few years. It's, uh, he's a pretty big Alabama fan. I'm a pretty big Oklahoma fan, so we'll probably disagree about that. But uh, on most issues, we agree. But what I, I, as someone who once served on this committee, what I admire is the way the committee worked together to find common solutions and put aside uh, different partisan lenses. Let me give you an example. Uh, President Biden's budget is $25 billion less than this budget. And Mike proposed a number that the Senate uh, uh, Armed Services Committee had also agreed upon. Again, $25 billion more for defense. And when he put that out there, uh, while Chairman Smith opposed it, uh, 14 Democratic members supported it. So again, they crossed the aisle. They, they voted for something different than their President Biden wanted, something different than their own chairman advocated, but something they thought was the right number to defend the country. We also got in the bill 20 different uh, uh, measures to deal with Afghanistan and the debacle and disaster that happened there. In other words, this committee didn't try and cover up anything. It wants to understand uh, what happened, what went wrong, uh, while the Biden administration uh, maintains that getting out of Afghanistan was done superbly. Anybody that watches the television knows it wasn't. Uh, 13 Americans were killed. Uh, we left behind hundreds uh, of Americans, uh, tens of thousands probably of Afghans that should have gotten out. It was a debacle. Uh, and to this committee's credit, they're going to get to the root causes of this and have hearings on it and make the administration uh, come clean on, on the decisions that were made. And again, there's also some very important uh, uh, provisions in there, both in procurement and uh, weapons development, things that Long term will be important in Oklahoma, things like the development of the B-21 bomber, which ultimately will be maintained at Tinker Air Force Base. Uh, much more importantly, this, uh, this bill is one of a series of defense bills. It takes a while in defense to sort of uh, you know, work things through that will uh, get us focused uh, not on just the war on terror, which we certainly need to think about, but also the, the new challenges posed by a rising China and a resurgent Russia. And it reorients our defense bill to, to take into account the competition from what we call near peer uh, powers, that is competitive powers. Uh, you know, when you're fighting in the Middle East against the Taliban, they don't have an air force, they don't have heavy artillery, uh, they're not involved in cyber warfare. If you're dealing with the Russians and the Chinese, you can uh, count on their ability to, to bring every weapon system and every potential challenge to you. And this bill does a good job of taking that into account, continuing the expansion of the American Navy, uh, you know, uh, giving our people the most modern systems that we can find because they're going to deal with, if they ever have to confront uh, Russia and China actively, and we hope they never do, but if they do, we need to give them the very best uh, equipment and training that we can. I think this bill moves us in that direction. Uh, so it's a really important bill. It passed the, the House uh, on Thursday on a big bipartisan vote. The majority of Republicans and the majority of Democrats both voted for this bill. So I'm very proud of it, and it shows Congress working well together. We'll now go into a conference with the Senate, uh, where uh, Senator Inhofe, obviously, as the top Republican on the Senate Armed Services Committee, will play a big role. And I have every confidence that we will come out with a really good bill before the end of the year that both sides can be proud of, and hopefully the president will sign, even though it's going to have 
more money and different set of priorities than the president himself originally proposed. So that was the good that happened this week in Congress, and it's very good. Let's talk about some of the bad. Uh, we're going to today vote on something called the Women's uh, Health Protection Act. That sounds like something everybody should be for, but what it really is is abortion on demand. It's a strictly partisan bill uh, that uh, would allow, um, you know, an abortion at any time, any place, would overturn dozens of state laws, would uh, basically make a mockery out of the idea that we don't do abortions except in cases of rape, incest, and the mother's life past the point of viability, that is past the point when the fetus could live on its own. Uh, this would allow uh, late-term abortions, it would allow, uh, frankly, some barbaric practices in terms of dismemberment abortions, and anywhere, anything is fair game. And I think uh, uh, Americans can disagree on being pro-life or pro-choice, but they want a regulatory framework that minimizes abortions and that uh, uh, recognizes that uh, life is a very important and sacred, in my view, and uh, we should have uh, as few abortions as we possibly can. So uh, this bill is the exact opposite. This is uh, uh, an extraordinarily radical bill. Uh, it was uh, written without any consultation uh, with Republicans. You'll find pro-choice Republicans opposing this bill, uh, as well as certainly uh, pro-life uh, Republicans, uh, and it's not going to go anywhere in the United States Senate uh, because the Senate well, on a bill like this would take 60 votes, and I can assure you there's no way to achieve 60 votes on a bill this radical uh, on an issue that this important. So this is all about political messaging, making points. You know, it's the exact opposite of what we saw in the, uh, the National Defense Authorization Act, which was a serious effort to work together to address a serious problem. This is a, an effort to score political points that will never, ever happen legislatively. Now let's talk about the ugly. And the ugly is what's happening in terms of uh, long-term uh, funding uh, for the government. We have two immediate problems in Congress. One is to keep the government open. We will actually run out of money, uh, we, or, or spending authority, really, on September 30th. And most Republicans are prepared to support, uh, you know, keeping the government open. I certainly am. Um, but that really important measure uh, was also combined with something called the debt ceiling, which allows the United States to go further into debt. Uh, and honestly, if you don't pass it, you would, government would grind to a halt. But in the past, when we do the debt ceiling, we usually try to address the debt itself. What what measures can we take that will slow the growth of the debt, ultimately uh, bend us back toward balance? And that's a bipartisan discussion because, again, you need 60 votes usually in the United States Senate to, to do this. Uh, and Republicans, when they're in the majority, even though they certainly, um, you know, uh, raise the debt ceiling, generally try to do it in ways that long term will address the debt, at least to some degree. Uh, Democrats chose not to do this, but expected Republicans to participate. Uh, and Republicans simply aren't going to do that. Democrats are on a spending binge of unprecedented proportions. They, they authorized uh, and spent $1.9 trillion earlier this year on coronavirus. There wasn't a single Republican vote for that. Republicans had offered a compromise at six to $800 billion. Um, you know, they uh, moved through the appropriations process without a single Republican vote. Uh, again, raising domestic spending by 15% and defense spending by only one, uh, actually uh, by 18%. Uh, no consultation, no effort to arrive at, a, at an agreed upon framework. Uh, and now we have, of course, a $3.5 trillion uh, Democratic wish list, the so-called human infrastructure bill, a reconciliation bill. Uh, that uh, we'll see sometime in the next few weeks. Uh, and I think Republicans said, look, we don't control the presidency, we don't control the Senate, we don't control uh, the House. So if you're going to do this, you're going to have to do it on your own. You can pass a debt ceiling as part of the reconciliation package. Now, that only takes 51. Uh, don't ask us to put our fingerprints on this. The Democrats have uh, passed the debt ceiling through the House. They did it on a straight party line vote. Uh, they also uh, included with it Again, uh, a CR, which I could support. 
a continuing resolution that would keep the government open. There's some important additional money for Americans that have been uh, hit by recent hurricanes and natural disasters. I'm very supportive of that. We have our share of disasters in Oklahoma, and so uh, we'll be asking for help at some point. So we should be willing to help other people that are, uh, you know, in difficult circumstances right now, particularly our friends in Louisiana and along the Gulf Coast. And finally, there's additional money for aid to Afghan refugees. And again, I support that. Uh, that's uh, uh, something that, uh, again, these are people that once they're appropriately vetted uh, for both health and security purposes, uh, almost all of them helped American troops, ran great risks on our behalf. We should welcome them to the United States. Uh, given the Biden decisions, I, administration's decision, I think shameful decision to basically abandon Afghanistan and turn it over to the Taliban. But these are legitimate refugees who uh, threw their lot with the United States and we should welcome them just as we welcome Cuban refugees, just as we welcome people from Venezuela. Uh, these are people that are, are fleeing for their lives because they have oppressive political uh, regimes. And uh, so again, those are all things we could do. But the Democrats, again, uh, couple that with the debt ceiling vote, just trying to, to force Republicans to, uh, you know, vote for something they oppose when we actually agree on, on a lot of things here. Uh, and to me, that's a bad way to legislate. Uh, you try to find areas of agreement and move things together that people can vote on together. Now, next week will be an extraordinarily eventful week because we're going to have to figure out a way to uh, keep the government open. Uh, this debt ceiling issue probably needs to be resolved before the middle of October, and the Democrats can decide if they want to resolve it in a bipartisan way or they want to put it as part of their reconciliation package. Uh, and then there's the looming battles over uh, the, uh, the, the so-called bipartisan infrastructure bill, which, to be fair, is bipartisan. There's a lot of Republican support for it. Uh, it's got some problems. We'll talk about those next week. It's not fully paid for. Uh, and frankly, the process by which it was fashioned uh, was a process that meant Oklahoma's interests were not uh, directly considered. Uh, so there's going to be some concern about it. And then we're going to uh, sooner or later have to deal with this reconciliation bill. And, but the Democrats um, know there's not going to be any Republican support for that. And they're disagreeing amongst themselves as to what should be in it, how big the package should be, uh, and they haven't been able to come together. Uh, but again, that happens when you have a narrow majority uh, and you're not willing to work with the other side. Uh, you have to literally browbeat every one of your own members into supporting it. That's what the Democrats are busy doing now. They're trying to blackmail their moderates or beat them up. So people like Joe Manchin or Kirsten Sinema in the Senate or the group of nine moderates in the House that uh, uh, a couple weeks ago uh, uh, raised objections over linking the infrastructure bill, which they support, uh, with the uh, um, reconciliation bill, a much larger $3.5 trillion bill, which, which some of them have concerns about, at least. Uh, so we'll see how the Democrats uh, um, you know, wrestle through that. But again, uh, Democrats chose not to include Republicans in discussing a reconciliation package. Uh, and uh, so Republicans aren't going to be, number one, supportive of that package, or number two, help them uh, put the country further into debt to finance it. Uh, if you really want both sides to come together, you have to involve each side from the beginning of the process, and they have to work on the bill in common and develop a common set of objectives and then move forward together. Uh, Democrats have chosen this year largely not to do that. The, the National Defense Authorization Act is a, is a wonderful exception to that tendency. But on the big things, on the spending bills, they've so far decided they're just going to spend as much as they possibly can for as long as they possibly can with no Republican input, uh, let alone any check on their appetite other than their own ability to get every member on their own side on the same page. So it's going to be a pretty interesting fall. Next week, uh, uh, we're going to find out whether we can continue the to fund the government uh, because funding runs out on September 30th. Uh, we're going to find out within the next uh, uh, three weeks, I would say, whether we can come to a common debt ceiling deal or whether or not the, the uh, Democrats are simply going to ram it through in the reconciliation package. 
and we're going to find out whether they can actually do a reconciliation package and at what number and what programs are going to be in it. Again, these are areas of great disagreement amongst Democrats, but uh, the fact that they shut Republicans out means they're going to have to, to uh, again, somehow satisfy all their competing uh, constituencies, uh, again, with no help uh, from the other side of the aisle. There's simply not a single Republican that's going to vote for this $3.5 trillion monstrosity uh, that uh, they've, uh, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and their top lieutenants have, have cooked, uh, cooked up. So, uh, again, we got some good things done for America this week, the National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, we put up uh, a heck of a fight and will on the, the Women's Health Protection Act. Uh, uh, that will probably pass the House, but it will not go anywhere in the United States Senate. Uh, so it's an exercise in political futility. And finally, we're engaged in a great struggle right now and will be for the rest of the fall in terms of uh, uh, this uh, uh, reconciliation bill and, uh, you know, and the infrastructure bill, what will pass, what can pass, uh, what can be done to make sure the government doesn't shut down, what can be done in a bipartisan way to address uh, legitimate uh, disaster needs for American citizens uh, to address the legitimate needs of an Afghan population that uh, we have a special obligation toward. Uh, you know, those are things that have to be sorted out in the weeks ahead. But uh, we'll have the opportunity to do chats like this again. Uh, and so uh, we look forward to keeping you informed. Uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, just keep in mind that while it looks like chaos, every now and then something good gets done here. The National Defense Authorization Act, in my view, is a, a terrific compromise, a move in the right direction, something that ultimately, when we pass it in cooperation with the Senate, will uh, enhance uh, American security and it'll have been done in a bipartisan way, which should reinforce your faith in the institutions uh, of the country and the ability of the two parties to work together. We need to find more examples like that, and hopefully in the next uh, few weeks and months we will.